Hello world, Bob here. Uh, <clears throat> corn is as high as an elephant's eye and it looks like it's reaching right up to the sky but that's mostly because on this lovely July day the sky's really low and threatening. I'm on a walk again. The eagle-eyed amongst you might notice this is a walk I've done before the other way. I actually started this walk uh, about an hour ago, about three miles ago, and I wasn't in the mood to talk to you <laughs> I've been a day. Um, I've now had some exercise and I've had my lunch en route, feeling a bit chirpier. Having a low day today. It's a Tuesday. I've had a couple of weeks of uh, being on holiday, hence no videos. And I'm now just over two weeks into this million step challenge for Diabetes UK. And uh, I'm not doing too badly. I'm a couple of thousand steps behind where I should be, or I was end of last night. And um, so I'm trying to beat the beat, <laughs> catch back up again today. Um, I just, this morning I was so tired. I was really tired last night and then I didn't sleep particularly well. And uh, I swap hands, so I didn't sleep well. And this morning I took my wife to work and I just wanted to come back. I wanted to do, I wanted to sleep, I wanted to be pathetic. I wanted a day off, which is ridiculous because I don't do anything that warrants a day off. And um, <clears throat> I was thinking, oh, a day of self-care, self-compassion. Uh, now wondering whether self-compassion is a is an excuse. Um, anyway, I got back. I did actually go to bed for an hour. Had a snooze. Got woken up by the religious nursery that's crept into Radio 4 Extra recently. And I persuaded myself out. Going on a big walk. I'm just round the lanes. Wandering places I know. Nowhere special. And I realised, actually before I stopped for lunch, that one of the things I need to do is, uh, is actually practice a bit of gratitude. Um, because it's really easy to feel down, and I am feeling down today. I'm feeling tired, like I'm not making, my brain is telling me I'm not making any progress, I'm not getting anywhere, I'm failing. And actually that's not true. I've upped my exercise levels significantly in the last couple of weeks since doing this thing. Uh, however, some days have been lower than others. I have averaged the 10, well, 10, 11,000 steps that they say we should do. Uh, and that's, that's brilliant. It's really, really good. I've also been, I have actually lost some weight uh, in the last two or three weeks. Partly thanks to having a lovely virus on holiday. <laughs> but I have managed to lose about three kilos, which is what, six pounds-ish, roughly. Um, <clears throat> and that's really good. That's significant progress in the right direction. I need to be grateful for that. I'm feeling stronger as I walk. Uh, I'm finding these walks less onerous. The legs just keep going. Those legs down there, they just keep going. <laughs> stomp, stomp, stomp. <clears throat> what else? Oh, one of the really weird, big changes that's happened. I'm gonna stop the people gardening here, I'll tell you in a minute. Where was I? Oh yes. Uh, I've been doing this intermittent fast, well, not intermittent, this fasting thing. So uh, we, uh, this is my wife's been trying to help as well. We've sort of, I stopped eating at nine in the evening. That's the, the cut off. And then I don't eat again theoretically before 11 the next morning. And actually I'm finding that surprisingly easy. Here comes a car, I shall just keep wittering on. And um, let the noise go past. So, finding that surprisingly easy and gratifyingly so, I'm not sort of um, suffering desperate blood sugar excitements uh, mid-morning or anything. Um, and I just today, I've done the same today, so I stopped. I actually walked the first hour or so of this walk, 
stopped at my favourite garden centre, had my brunch, sort of the well, best part of lunchtime really. And one of the things that's done is that it's, now that I've got used to it, it's actually reduced the number of meals that I'm eating in a day. Now when I first started doing it, I was very much waiting till 11 o'clock and then going, oh, oh my goodness, yes, right, quick, eat, eat breakfast. And then uh, by the middle of the afternoon or early afternoon, you could then have lunch and then you could have your dinner later. Now I've managed to break that cycle, as you say, and reduced the number of actual meals I'm eating. But on top of that, possibly more importantly, more surprisingly for me, or I am more surprised by the fact that um, I'm managing to stop eating, get this, I'm managing to stop eating before the plates are empty. So I've got a fear it's going to be a bad year for farming this year. It's July, this is the state of the fields. I struggle even to get the machines in here, never mind uh, get a decent harvest. So as I said before the uh, traffic so rudely interrupted me, I'm now on a nice little uh, footpath across the fields here. Oh, got butterflies dancing in front of me. Just specially arranged for me, you understand. <clears throat> yeah, I've managed to actually... The important thing here is that I'm managing to recognise when I am full and not just eat whatever is there. There is something in my head and again all these things probably come from early childhood or childhood there is something in my head which obviously worries it's going to be hungry later on you've got to eat absolutely everything I, uh, i'm not sure where that comes from i i distrust my memories of childhood i have relatively few of them and i know they're very malleable things memories anyway but feel my mother was always on a diet well, for as long as I can remember always and as a child I was fairly rotund I don't suppose I was obese by modern children's standards but it just seemed to be always that implication that you should be eating less losing weight I don't remember eating things I liked particularly I remember horrible salads, nasty flat lettuce leaves before they invented iceberg lettuces and you had to eat cost lettuce. Um, so part of my eating issue is it is the binge eating, it's I suppose it what is it? Famine eating, it's um, it's the body worrying, or the brain anyway. So that is an amazing startling change that I have I'm not saying I'm going to keep it up, I'm not saying it's perfect, I need to work at it, but I am managing to recognise that I've had enough. Put the knife and fork down, leave the last dozen chips on the plate and feel satisfied and content. I think part of how I've achieved this is sharing what I'm thinking uh, with my wife. You can share with anybody, you need a if you're lucky enough and you have a close confidant, somebody who will listen to these things without being judgmental, <clears throat> that's a really valuable thing. It's a valuable thing to talk about. You need somebody who will listen without judging because what goes on in here isn't sensible. It isn't rational. And you need somebody to listen to what you're saying is going on in here and accept that that is what's going on in here even if that's not the reality which it very rarely is uh, there is certainly no risk of famine in my life at the moment famous last words Q end of civilization um, there's no shortage of sweet corn anyway <laughs> if it ever finishes growing in this weather it's bloody miserable so, um, <clears throat> yeah, <sighs> to take a moment in this field to 
breathing the air. Well, bask in the sunshine if there was any sunshine, but you know, breathing the air. And ah, oh, congratulate myself. Do, do, do. Good stuff, on with the walk. Ah, just when you think it's safe to go walking, the world throws exciting bits of footpath like this at you. Uh, <laughs> through there somewhere. Try not to slide into the drainage ditch down there. Or uh, <coughs> lose too much blood to the holly tree. I'm bent double here, ladies and gentlemen. The birds are laughing at me. Ah, 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 they're going. Ah, ah, ah. The next time you ask yourself, shall I walk up the side of this field I know and I have walked on before and a little bit greasy sometimes, or shall I explore the footpath that runs down the other side of the field? Hmm, go with the path you because behind the picture a bit, this is it. That's the path down there. It's um it's exciting, it's um, yeah, it's overgrown, uh, it's full of brambles and bracken and other stuff and all of that is wet and is dripping on me and wiping itself off on me. Nice! For this being uh, northwest England in July, I'll give you one guess as to why I've put my coat on. <laughs> There's a reason for liking canal walks. And that is that they're basically flat, unlike the countryside. Oh, into each life a little rain must fall and a bit of uphill must occur. Oh, see you at the top. Well, ladies and gentlemen, spoons, people of any other uh, predilection, made it to the top of the ridge, uh, punishing myself to come this way. Partly to get the steps up, partly because I mean to drop into the co-op down there, pick up an Amazon parcel from their lockers. If I buy some chocolate while I'm there, it'll be entirely accidental. But for today, that's probably it. Moral of today, you have down days. You've got to let yourself have down days. You've got to be positive. But, uh, this is a really good way I do these videos. A lot of it's for me. Speaking out loud, as if to an audience, what it is you've you've achieved and what you've got to be grateful for is a really seems like a good strong way of getting that into the old noggin. So for today, before I turn left and down the hill, that's it. Bob out. script just walking over a stile there and a uh, little painted pebble in a bag it says Kinney died aged 37 of a brain aneurysm the 10th of February 23 Kinney has two children 13 and 18 then 13 and 18 help keep Kinney's memory alive by hiding her rocks so I've just found this one I'm going to take it and put it somewhere else <laughs> nice idea